Hello everyone, Exchange for Media in collaboration with Danny Pascal Group is curating a series of video interviews called Non-Metro's Driving the Economic Resurgence, where we focus on how the Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities in India are likely to read, lead the recovery from the pandemic and emerge as the drivers of growth. We are very glad that today we have with us Mr. Debal Goshal, Vice President Marketing told us, and he's going to share his insights with us on how he sees the Non-Metro's performance in the days ahead and how the non-metros will be contributing not just to Voltas as well as to the entire country. Uh, Mr. Goshal, welcome. Hi, hi everybody and wishing you all a very happy uh, Deshera and a festive season. I'm sure all of you are enjoying at home and making the best of the celebrations here. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Goshal, again. And uh, starting off first, just looking back at uh, you know the pandemic and the ensuing lockdown which happened, how did this impact the durable and white consumer durable and the white goods sector? And what has been the recovery like for Volta since restrictions have been eased? All right. So uh, let me just give you the Volta's perspective first. Uh, Volta's is a six-decade-old company, and we are into uh, cooling products refrigeration products, and now recently more appliances. Uh, with this uh, 60 years of experience in consumer durables and cooling, refrigeration, and projects business, uh, this is the first time we saw uh, you know, a complete lockdown in our, in our presence in the country for almost six decades. Uh, having said that, we were, we were prepared for this April and May uh, lockdown period in such a way that uh, uh, our distribution and our brand uh, fired back immediately when the lockdown uh, you know, was lifted. But yes, as an industry, uh, the lockdown affected the months of April and May significantly because uh, though there were consumers who wanted to buy cooling products or, or home appliances, but the channel was not there. Right. So where do you buy from and how do you buy? Uh, so these two months affected the overall business of the industry, I would say, especially cooling products, which is the peak months of March, April, and May contribute almost 50% to the overall industry. So that big chunk was not available for the industry. Uh, so that was lost out. Um, but after uh, the lockdown was lifted, I think we saw a lot of traction, which I'll talk about uh, in a subsequent uh, time. So. We are we, as a brand, uh, we were uh, we were geared to bounce back. We did a lot of things during the lockdown to be engaged with the consumer, and uh, our our social handles, our, our our digital efforts were were significant. Being a service oriented product category, we reached out to a consumer through our after sales service team, and uh, uh, we we reached out to people in various enterprises where we we were servicing essential services. Uh, like hospitals, blood banks, and, and uh, critical establishments. So we had the infrastructure to reach out to people. So while sales was not happening, but the team was pretty much engaged in reaching out to people in terms of after sales service. So that's how we we uh, you know uh, went through the lockdown. Uh, we didn't forget the consumer uh, across the country. Uh, although we didn't have sales, uh, but we had a, we had a lot of uh, commitments towards the customer in terms of after sales service. Uh, but if you could just elaborate a little bit more on this, because you said you didn't forget to the consumer and Voltas is a very established and trusted brand in the country. So how did you, while you didn't forget the consumer, how did you ensure that you remained, uh, you, you retained your share of voice and remained top of mind? Okay, so uh, taking a cue from what I spoke about in the last question, uh, you see the consumers wanted us, for example, consumers wanted us to know how to service their conditioners on their own. So we created a lot of do-it-yourself videos, which we posted across our social handles, which were widely appreciated. We took the lead, of course, the competition followed after that. But that was one of those steps which we, which we took to reach out to consumers who were, who were looking at us from a, from a functional perspective. At that time, I don't think any kind of, any kind of emotional hook would have, would have helped any brand. Uh, we are, all brands had to be purposeful. So our purpose was to reach out and help people whenever they wanted to service their products. And that's why the content was very important. Day in and day out, uh, with the help of our agencies, uh, we created new content. We, 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 uh, we, we engaged with consumers from a 
occasion perspective, from a, from a, on a topical perspective, uh, wherever there were some uh, uh, some special occasions, we reached out to them through our through our content. Content was created not only from a functional perspective, but also we wanted to reach out to consumers, reminding them that we are there with them on special occasions. Uh, besides that, we had the advantage of servicing essential services. So our, our team was there in the field, in the front line, servicing those establishments from a cooling perspective, right from hospitals to blood banks. Now, uh, we could use that team in emergencies for even for uh, single customers who had medical issues or who had issues to do with emergencies uh, on the health front. And we used uh, our teams uh, to help those consumers who reached out to us uh, when they were in, in, in an emergency. So Voltas was engaged uh, through our own uh, follower base. Voltas was engaged through our own customer base because we have a large population of products in the market today. Voltas was engaged from a institutional perspective. And of course, Voltas was engaged as a brand on, on, on digital platforms. Uh, what are the, some of the key consumer behavioral changes that you have seen uh, that has taken place since March and how has Volta adapted to these changes? All right, so the consumers have become a uh, little more specific in their requirements, I would say. They, uh, you know, they are not searching for things which would be purely aspirational. They are, they are uh, looking at things which are which are specific, which are need-based, which are which are you know which can take care of the immediate requirements. So uh, so we have seen a trend where consumers are doing a lot of search online. They know what to buy, which brand to buy, what model to buy, and after doing their homework pretty seriously, then they venture out to a store or they go online. Now, uh, the, time, the time spent at different stores or different dealer outlets also has reduced because they know what they're going in for. So there's less amount of window shopping. So for, uh, for brands and marketers and consumer durables, what we have witnessed is the fact that we have to be there at the right place, at the right shelf, with the right model, uh, with the right fill-in ratios, so that consumers can take what they have searched for and what they've decided for. We've also seen that being a brand which is top of mind helps during this pandemic because if you're not there in the consumer's mind, he will not consider you. Uh, so we had the advantage of that, uh, of being a brand which is top of mind. Our brand equity in this category is, is, uh, is pretty high, one of the highest, especially in air conditioning business. So we had the advantage. And I would say similarly, other brands which had uh, a good equity in other categories uh, got the benefit of the same. So, so that's the that's the overall trend which you have seen that uh, the shopping experience has become much more tighter. You know, it's not it's not a it's not a wide experience which we have, which a consumer can afford to do today. Secondly, uh, there is a huge amount of influence which is which is uh, taking place within the household, and decisions are being taken by consulting each other. Earlier, decisions were taken uh, in isolation many a times, but since uh, being in home appliances and since home is the is where the action is today a um, lot of lot of consumers are consulting each other within the family to take a decision uh, there were categories like like air conditioners refrigerators washing machines uh, air coolers but each category traditionally we used to we used to define the consumer as a male or a female uh, uh, adult non adult right so typical demographic definitions have have blurred today uh, I think every category is required for every gender, every age group, and every segment. So the durable basket has become segment neutral uh, in, during this pandemic. Uh, I don't think anybody who would have taken a decision for air conditioner wouldn't have consulted each other within the family, whether the husband or the wife. I don't think anybody who would have bought a, bought, bought a dishwasher could have gone ahead without consulting each other. Uh, so uh, we saw very democratic trend in the decision making process of the consumer uh, in the household i'd just like you to take you uh, take on uh, you know on this point that you mentioned about how it's no longer about targeting the male or the fee, uh, or the woman of the household so how has your marketing strategy thus evolved because traditionally you're looking at you know either the male the woman or a particular age group so how has that also changed so uh, 
we as as a, you talk about Voltas as a brand, uh, Voltas as a brand has cut across segments uh, throughout. You know, we have never been uh, a segment specific brand, especially when you are catering to such a large portfolio of products. Over a period of time, segmentation has become uh, very strategic in nature, and it's not the, the conventional segmentation which you have to follow in, the, in our business. So, uh, our our marketing pitch, our our, our product hook whether it is tangible or emotional has always been towards the family has always been towards towards the family as a as an entity so that's helped us uh, being a durable product many a times you'll see brands talking about their own technology and about the xyz feature without even uh, getting to know what the consumer wants we have been driven by consumer insights and those insights have been taken not only from the from one specific individual in the family but from the entire family. So these insights have come to us. We have taken those insights on board and we have given the consumers a simple and a very meaningful feature which they can relate to always. So not only during this pandemic, but for the past many years as a brand, we have we have taken the consumer insights very seriously. If you recall in almost 10 years back when Voltas changed the whole ball game by, by talking about an AC which could also heat in the winters and the all weather campaign came on, up on board that campaign was 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 cutting across all segments it was not only targeted at any particular individual in the house uh, when we spoke about energy efficiency many years back almost 15 years back and we, we spoke about india with the ac that time also we were cutting across segments we were not talking to specific individuals so we uh, so as a brand we have always been segment neutral and we have always appealed to the entire household whether it is an adult whether it's a it's a parent whether it's a child in fact, many of our commercials and our, and our, and our creative content has always taken into account uh, the, the wider members of the family, right? From grandparents to children. Um, now, just coming back to what's the main focus of this interview, a lot of reports have indicated that non-metro markets have seen an upsurge in demand when compared to the metro markets. How are you reading the situation? Okay, so let me set the context on from a... Uh, from a town classification perspective, how do we define metros and non-metros? So you see, in India, uh, anything which is above a 10 lakh population, which is which is a million uh, plus population, is a metro, right? And anything which is above a five million population is a major metro. Now uh, there is there is a there is a clear-cut demarcation in these markets. There are x amount of towns which belong to uh, metros and x amount of towns which belong below the 10 lakh population. Of strata. So we define metros as the urban markets for us in a durable basket. And the moment we go below the 10 lakh population, uh, that becomes a semi-urban market for us. So anything between a 1 lakh to a 10 lakh population is a, is a semi-urban market for us, which is a, which is a smaller town. Uh, if you want to go more deeper into it, there is also a classification between 5 lakh and 10 lakh population, which, um, which we should be targeting. And below 5 lakh, up to one lakh is the smaller towns completely. If you go below a lakh in terms of the census uh, definition, although technically they are not uh, they are not villages, but they are they are bordering the rural uh, segment of the market. So uh, as an industry, we are focusing one lakh upwards towards five million, and uh, in terms of data, forty five percent of 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 the market belongs to metros and above. But surprisingly, 55% of the market belongs to below the metro level, which is below 10 lakh population. So that's a big market to cater to. You know? And out of that 45%, 35% of the market belongs to 1 lakh to 10 lakh population. Significant. So almost one third of India mm. consumes consumer durables or air conditioning products uh, you know, uh, in, that, in that pop strata. So that's, that's an important segment of the market in terms of population and town classification. So what is the situation? How are you reading the situation on ground and how is the consumer sentiment in the non-metros? Since the contributions are still coming from non-metros, I would say the sentiments are in fact uh, at par with any major town. Mm -hmm. uh, during the unlock period, when it just opened up, we witnessed more traction in the upcountry towns rather instead of the major metro, because major metros are locked down. Mm -hmm. uh, and there were still pockets of uh, pockets of lockdown. 
and containment zones. So I think when it opened up between June and September, uh, the traction in smaller towns were much more higher than the larger towns. There were two factors to it. Uh, a, the fact that the channel, the distribution channel, which caters to these consumers in a, in a, in a, in a, in a smaller town were opened up faster. Uh, they had lesser restrictions there. And we call them the electrical or electronics Kirana store. Uh, those were open uh, you know, much, in a much more consistent manner than the retail chains, which you see in, in, in the major, major towns. So the market got polarized. At one end, in, in the metros, you saw online business picking up more uh, because the major retail stores were based out of malls or commercial establishment, which were not opened up. Uh, on the, in the smaller towns, the, those smaller electrical Kirana stores were opened up. And one could order by calling up your uh, nearest neighborhood electrical store in terms of whatever you wanted to buy once you have searched on the net. So we saw this, these two developments from a, from a decision-making perspective or from a, from, a, from a buying perspective, that there was a trend towards smaller shops, there was a trend towards smaller stores in the smaller towns. Okay, but uh, you know, uh, I'd also like to uh, ask you. You know, when you mentioned fifty-five percent of your sales comes from non-metros, but looking ahead, do you see this uh, number increasing? I, I was uh, sorry, I was quoting the industry, not our sales as such. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, for Voltas, then uh, what is the uh, how how it's, much? It's, uh, what percent of your sales then comes in from? It's uh, on the high. It's higher than uh, the industry trend. You know, almost you can say five to seven percent higher in the mini metros in the smaller towns. Yeah. Because so, we have a better better reach, our distribution reach is much more higher than 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 categories than other brands. So our sales contribution is higher in tier two, tier three, tier four towns vis-a-vis -vis industry. So I could say around sixty to sixty-two percent of uh, your sales then. If forty-five percent, if forty-five percent is industry, we are at fifty-five percent. Yeah. Okay. Um, now looking ahead, the festive season is upon us. So how are you looking at the festive season, particularly in the non-metro markets? Non-metro markets, uh, the, the festival period had started already. I don't think, uh, you know, we are waiting for, we have, we have seen good traction already uh, in, in smaller towns. Mm -hmm. And wherever we have, wherever the industry has a distribution reach, mm -hmm. I'm talking about big distributors getting to smaller, smaller uh, outlets, there we have seen a huge amount of traction. Uh, so, the sentiments are very positive. We started with Onam in the month of August, and although it was uh, not so beneficial for the industry because the rains were still hanging around Kerala, but the sentiments were there. People wanted to buy, but there was a bit of a uh, bit of a challenge in terms of the weather conditions there. Then it moved on to Ganesh Chaturthi. Unfortunately, Maharashtra had not opened up to that extent that time, so the 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 sentiments were high, but we didn't see much of results. However, recently, uh, uh, in the last seven to 10 days, or maybe two weeks, uh, uh, when we have seen a fair amount of interest in the consumers to buy household appliances, at all, and also the second summer, which is coming for air conditioning products. So there is a, there is, the timing is good. Uh, home appliances are being replaced, or there's a pent up demand for home appliances which we are seeing because of the fact that people didn't buy in the, in the peak summers, people are coming back to us with, 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 with more requirements. There is also uh, uh, the, the, the cooling aspect of it. There is uh, uh, the second summer, which is, which is taken over in many parts of the country, which is helping us uh, to buy cooling products. Uh, you know, you spoke about the emergence of the local Kirana store. How are you, can you just uh, tell me how has retail changed for you? Because are consumers still vary to go to the larger, uh, large format stores? How has that evolved over the past few months? Large format stores are bouncing back slowly. Uh, and earlier, they had suffered in between the month of June, July, and August. Uh, but recently, they are they are bouncing back, uh, especially with the necessary precautions. Uh, as I said at the beginning, people were not people were wary about visiting large format stores, uh, uh, and they were doing their homework before going there. And many of the people were actually buying from the from the from the front of the store. They were not even going inside the store. But now that is changing slowly. Uh, there is there is a fair amount of confidence which is built up uh, to visit large format stores. 
and there is a fair amount of precautions being taken by the life of stores for not allowing people to come inside in a group. Uh, many stores, many large format stores are taking the right precautions, giving the right advice. Many of them act actually booking appointments for consumers to come in uh, at the right at a particular time so that they don't crowd the store. So these kind of steps are helping the retail formats to gather momentum. And I'm sure during the festival period, uh, we will be able to uh, see more traction in large format stores. Can you also tell us uh, about your marketing strategies that you've planned for the the uh, two weeks ahead, which is for the festive season? Okay, so this festive season, we have we have been uh, pretty much prepared with, with our range of consumer offers. We feel that there is a, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a requirement for consumers uh, to avail offers which make the process of getting into a category easier. Now, uh, instead of looking at only freebies or discounts, we are also talking about uh, how to enter a category by giving, uh, by investing a lower amount uh, or a lesser amount uh, as you know, as they consider a new category. So that's why we have we have uh, we have devised various finance schemes. Uh, finance used to contribute uh, almost 20 30 percent uh, from our secondary sales perspective, and this season we expect it to go and uh, to go up uh, purely because of the fact that consumers want to pay less upfront. So we have we are offering uh, a, a range of uh, consumer finance offers through NBFCs, uh, where the the upfront uh, payment is lesser than what uh, he would have paid if he would have uh, bought cash down. And we are also offering 10% cash back on various credit cards from the from various banks. Almost 10 banks we have partnered with, uh, and we are offering a 10% cash back on all our products, ranging from air conditioners to air coolers to commercial air products to air purifiers to to the Voltas Beko range of products, which are referred to the washing machine, dishwashers, and microwaves. So uh, all this uh, will help consumers to take a decision faster. They will have, uh, you know, they will see, uh, you know, there will be a ease of getting into a category. Uh, besides that, we are also offering uh, the peace of mind in terms of extended warranties. We have warranties uh, up to five years for air conditioners, four years for commercial refrigerant products, uh, three years and two years for refrigerators and washing machines. So uh, there's a huge range of uh, extended warranties which will give you peace of mind after you buy a consumer durable. So between the Voltas and the Voltas Beko range of products, there are, there are these offers which are applicable uh, up till Diwali. Yeah. Uh, looking ahead, what do you see will be the drivers of growth for Voltas? You're talking about the next six months? So you're talking... Yeah, over the next six months, say. So for us, uh, we are hopeful that the, 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 after the festival season gets over, uh, when the next summer comes in, uh, it will be a good summer. Uh, we, we hope that the summer sets in faster uh, by February or so. And uh, we should be able to uh, gather, uh, gather the second uh, traction, second wave of better traction February onwards. You see, South India starts firing from January onwards, in fact. Jan so the summer sets in much more faster there. So we are prepared with a new range of models in, from, from, the, from our air conditioning perspective. We are prepared with a new range of models uh, uh, from a from a refrigeration uh, direct cool refrigerator perspective. We have launched a new range of direct cool refrigerator, which we see under the Voltas Beko brand, which we see uh, uh, gaining a lot of momentum next year. And this year already started, but next year we'll get and uh, get better momentum as our supplies be, uh, uh, get better and better. So we are looking forward to a good summer, February onwards, and that would uh, set the ball rolling for us for the next year. And what about the festive season? What are your anticipation from this season? We are we are pretty positive about the season. You know, this this season would uh, uh, would be at par with the last festive season as, as far as we are concerned. Uh, I don't see I don't see any kind of dip in this festival season because of the fact that there has been a, a huge amount of comeback by the, by the consumers. Uh, uh, whatever time they lost out, they are coming back and and you know, getting their uh, home home appliances in order. And since home is where the action is, you know, we're all operating from home, we're all operating from our, our home as a workplace. 
So uh, people need people need home appliances. People need uh, convenience. People need comfort, and that's where we are positioned as. So we see the home will get refurbished. We see the home will get augmented uh, from a convenience perspective or a comfort perspective. And we are in the business of comfort and convenience any which way. So, so you see the festive season to be on par with year on year compared to last year, yes, or do you see do you see even uh, do you anticipate slight growth also? Yes, we anticipate growth also, but we, it's it's difficult to comment as of now. Mm -hmm. But because it just started, we'll see we'll see a a, a better picture uh, in the month of November close to Diwali. But we are definitely sure about the fact that it will be at par with last year. Okay, and uh, which markets do you see leading this growth? Any markets where you're looking to increase penetration and reach, particularly in the non-metro markets? Non-metro, as I said, contributes significantly. It will continue to contribute. Our market shares are very high across all pop state. We have a 27% market share in all India, which is the highest in the category for air conditioners. The nearest competition is 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 uh, is half our market share. We are almost 1,300 basis points ahead of competition. So we have a good market share in in across the country. If I if I buy, bifurcate the market share in a, from a pop data perspective, the metros we are definitely stronger. In in the in the mini metros or semi urban markets, we are we are strong. We maintain a 25% plus market share in all these markets. So uh, I don't see any any reason why we should not be doing well in mini metros, and our market share will only increase. Thank you so much, Mr. Deva Goshal, for taking the time out and wishing you again a very happy festive season. Thank you so much.